Um, so this morning we have the wonderful opportunity to hear from the Equip and Power class, Paul and Linda Mae Mackey. How many are taking that, the, the Empower School? There, I think this is our first time doing this. I think there's 68 people in the class. And um, tell, I mean, I'm excited to hear what they say. You know, Paul and Linda May, in fact, Paul and Linda May, why don't you come up here right now? Um, or Paul, whoever's coming up. The two are one. I always just think of both of you guys. Come on, let's give Paul a hand as he comes up here, you guys. Um, so there's a scripture. Paul will probably be able to tell me exactly where it is. I think it's in 1 Corinthians. It says, you have many teachers, but not many fathers. And I tell you what, Paul and Linda May are a father and a mother in the spirit. Yeah. That carry, I feel, a multiplied anointing. And they are generals in this house. You know, we got three prophetic words from three different individuals. And this is how the Empower School actually started. Um, one was uh, just a random person in the healing rooms down at Bethel. One was from our wonderful Michelle Webb, and another one was from Kristen Williams, who was here um, just a couple weeks ago from New Zealand. Before Bethesda even started, he said, you will be surrounded by generals. And that word happened two other times from two other people that had no, no idea about that word. So when we told Paul and Linda May that, Paul said, that's an incredible, incredible word, but you have to ask yourself the question then, what do generals do? What do they do? Well, they were born to lead armies, right? And that's why, like, every Sunday when I look out at everyone, during worship, wherever, all I see is a bunch of amazing sons and daughters and generals. And, um, which, and our, our vision statement for Bethesda, one of, part of the vision statement is uh, to encourage, equip, and empower hope-filled believers, and I'll kind of summarize it here, to impact their worlds or their sphere. And we have to do that from a place of sonship. we got to know who we are, right? Otherwise, we're not going to be moving in love. I mean, we can have the most prophetic insight. We can have the most amazing healing gift and amazing faith. And we're moving mountains and we're doing all this stuff. But if it's not birthed out of the security of the Father, knowing how much we're loved, what is it? It's a clanging symbol. So anyways, I'm going to turn it over to Paul. Can we just give him a hand? He's a father, and he moves in just a five. I feel like you have a five-fold ministry mantle on him. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, no, this, this one will do just fine, yeah. And if it's all right with you guys, I want to operate here on the floor because we have five students that are going to join us just shortly and give you some amazing testimonies. And that's actually what I'm here to do is facilitate them. So I just am going to be brief with you this morning, I think. <laughs> at least I'm going to work at that. Um, I have a little froggy with me and I'm winning the battle. So just put up with that. Uh, frogs are not tough. You just got to wrestle them to the ground. So we're doing that. Uh, having said that, this morning, would you just agree with me very quickly as we move into this time for uh, an increase of revelation in this moment? Yeah. Do you guys agree for that? So yeah. Holy Spirit, we come into even farther the throne room of God. We, we've stepped into worship. We're standing at your throne. We're looking you in the eye. But we want to step closer now, and we want to hear your actual heartbeat towards us this morning. Because in your presence, everything is possible. Amen? Yes. You guys agree with that? Yes. Okay. Then I want to set you up to succeed this morning by telling you that what you have asked for this morning, you have. Yes. Some of you are thinking about that. Let me say it one more time. What you have asked for this morning, you have. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, 
you have it. You're not looking for it. You're not wishing for it. You're not hoping for it. You have it. Yes. Thank you, Father. Now, standing there, your life journey from today is to learn what you have been given so you can possess it. So you can go to the store and buy a box of Cheerios and put it on the shelf. You have the Cheerios, but you don't possess them till you open the box and eat them. They're just the store's Cheerios on your shelf until you eat them. Now they are your possession. Are you with me? So what we're going to do today is create an encounter where you're going to eat the very thing that you've asked for, and now you will possess it. You guys ready to eat? Yes. Okay. So we need to, uh, I want to shift the atmosphere and further into the throne room just a little bit, and you're going to need to have your divine imaginations activated right now. Okay? So Holy Spirit, come and ignite our redeemed and restored imaginations so that we can go with you to see what you want us to see right now. In Jesus' name, amen. When you drove onto the property this morning and walked into this room, you did not come to church. You came into a family gathering where the king was seated at the head of the table and you sat down at the feast table. And we are eating together what he has provided. And God only provides supernatural nutrition. So you are now in his presence, and in his presence, I want you to look around the table. Go ahead. Look up and down the rows of the table. Everyone you're looking at is a son and a daughter of the living God, made in his image, full of supernatural potential, blessing, and favor. Your life can only increase from this moment because the kingdom is only ever increasing. You can't go back. It's too late for that. Turn your heart and look up. Your life is destined for increase. The challenge now is to know how to live with more capacity. Now, that person next to you has supernatural potential and capacity, so do you. Which means that everything we say from here on out this morning will co-create something. Let's make it a good thing. Let's learn to agree with God's opinion and then declare that. Are you with me? Because see, there's power in your words. You are a son and daughter of the living God. Therefore, when you say what he says, stuff happens. Yes. And every moment now that we live has been strategized for your increase and your growth. There's nothing going on in your life that has anything to do with the enemy. This is big. This is big. Yes, it is. See, you're now the stewardship of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's directing your life, not the enemy. He is the one who's now ordering things to cause you to grow and increase. 
so that you can shoulder the blessing. In the Old Testament, the priest crumbled under the glory of God. In the New Covenant, you're supposed to stand in it. Yes. But you need capacity. Therefore, every part of your life is now directed to your increase. Directed to your strengthening. Directed towards you getting broader shoulders to carry the revelation that God believes about you. Therefore, we can give thanks for everything, even our challenges. So standing there, I would like you to welcome five amazing people who are ready to share out of the wealth of their increase with you. Would you like to meet them? Okay, let's uh, give uh, an honorable welcome to our five students this morning. Come on up. Okay, now they're going to introduce themselves to you along the way this morning. But here's how you can access the wealth they're about to give away. As we, as they've all written their stories. They're just going to read because this is some of the time, this, for some of them, this is the first time to be telling their story. So I equip them to write their stories so they wouldn't be nervous. So they're just going to, they're going to share their wealth with you. Now, here's how you can step into their wealth. If you hear anything while they're sharing their testimony that you identify with, don't even hesitate, don't even think, don't even breathe. Just stand. Just stand up. And that's you saying yes to God for what I'm now hearing. And then they're going to pray. And if you agree with the prayer, you have what you've asked for. Yes? This is just wealth transfer. This is how the kingdom works. You agree, God releases. Say it with me. I agree, God releases. That's how it's going to go. So introduce yourself. Just tell us your name. Tell us your story. And then pray over us, okay? I'm Jean. Jean. Kind of small. <clears throat> okay. okay, what what wasn't flowing in my life um, was the love of God for people. I was very judgmental and critical. And this was especially evident um, with this Muslim lady that lived down on the floor, down in an apartment down on my floor. And um, she had a lot of visitors that come and go all the time and I was very suspicious of this lady. <laughs> and um, when, when I passed by, I could hear she, I could hear these people and they're speaking in their language and I knew they were plotting evil. <laughs> and um, so one day I was walking by the apartment and her son came out with this lady dressed in the whole Muslim thing and um, I got stuck on the elevator with them <laughs> and <clears throat> so it was really uncomfortable <clears throat> The door closed, and um, I asked Holy Spirit to give me his heart for these people. And suddenly, like this burst of energy, like an explosion, came right out of my middle, right out of my belly, and filled the elevator. All right. 
with love. My heart was like exploding yes. with the love of God. Yes. Yes. And we were all standing in this, and it changed us all. We, the, when the woman got on, her head was down, and she looked a little depressed, and all of a sudden this explosion took place and changed the atmosphere, and our eyes met, and she smiled, and she right. became beautiful. All right. And the man standing behind me, um, I couldn't see him, but he wished me a good evening, and I could hear glory in his voice. All right. All right. <laughs> so, um, um, okay, so what's different now is that, um, my funky attitude must have gotten swallowed up in the love of God. All right. <laughs> yeah. And we know that nobody can have a God encounter and not be changed. It's impossible. Right. So I can see now that this is our destiny, it's yeah. our inheritance to manifest the kingdom, to learn to live from the inside out. Yes. I can see that this is how he's going to fulfill his promise to us to cover the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord like the water covers yes. the sea. Yes. Yeah. Through you and through me. So right now, I trigger the ability in you to move in the realm of the kingdom. Yes. I trigger the ability yes. in you to release the power of the love of God yes. that dwells in you. Yes. And I, de I decree expansion of the boundaries of your heart yes. to embrace the call of God on your life. And yes. I decree and declare that every one of you will fulfill your destiny in God. Right. In Jesus name. Yes. Morning, my name's Dave. Um, hey Dave. Little off script, when the general asks you to do something, you gotta do it. You, you gotta, you've just gotta step forward. I was a little hesitant, but here goes. Uh, my name is Dave, and I'm a prince in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. We were given four questions to answer, so I'll start with the first one on what wasn't working in my life. An analogy would be that I kind of felt like a moth in a closet, albeit a pretty big moth but nonetheless, still a moth. <laughs> After 61 years, I didn't know who I was in Christ. I was having a feast on a lot of clothes, and I use that as a metaphor in that I was reading lots of books these past years from Christian authors. They were telling their various secrets to the, to the kingdom that have worked in their lives. They have something powerful to reveal, but it was always beyond my reach. I wasn't worthy. My identity was that of a pauper. What truth did I discover? Taking this class is an identity changer. I'm starting to see who I am in Christ. Once you start seeing and agreeing with what the word says about you, then you can take small steps in the kingdom. Small steps lead to bigger steps. In other words, more. Amen. I want more. This class is opening the door to the closet. The light is coming in, and as a moth slash pauper, I am drawn to it. So in a good way, I'm coming out of the closet. I am being transformed into my destiny in Christ. My identity is changing, and as a book that we have been reading in class says, I'm going from a pauper to a prince. Actually believing what the Bible says about me is true. I can have confidence in the Lord. I do have access to all he has paid for. 
I am gaining a freedom from the condemnation of not doing this or not doing that. Not doing enough spiritually speaking. The third thing is uh, what is happening, starting to flow. I know now that I have access to the deeper things of God. I am no longer a pauper in the kingdom. My identity as being a prince in the kingdom allows me to have access to the deeper truths of God. Once we call ourselves what God calls us, we start to accelerate down the road of transformation. I am starting to get to know brothers and sisters in Christ again, starting to see what a great treasure we have here at Bethesda. Because of Bethesda and the anointing on the leadership, there is freedom. Learning to walk in freedom is a whole new joy that is hard to explain. One of the aspects of my life is, that is changing is, I would prefer 10,000 handshakes to one hug. I am not a hugger. He used to give me the heebie-jeebies. My wife can attest to that. But here at Bethesda, there is no escape. I'm trapped by a bunch of Bible-believing, Christ-seeking, Father-glorifying believers. I'm slowly giving up, albeit reluctantly. I like fishing. My fishing is now an opportunity to impart to, impart to the people I go fishing with something of gold that will affect their lives. I now know that I have a sphere of influence that will draw people into the kingdom. I not only want them to leave my boat with a fish, but I want them to think later that something was different when you go fishing with me. As a final thing, an impartation. Father, thank you for re revealing truth to us that set us free in the spirit. Show each one of us here who we are in you. I want to impart a hunger for more. Ben and Tish have been given an anointing from you. Help us to find where we fit in under that anointing or covering that you have provided. Help us to discover the gold in each one of our brothers and sisters here at Bethesda. Young, in between, and old, getting to know one another in an atmosphere of freedom. Yes. All this as we march along towards a high calling in Christ. Hi, uh, my name's Maurice. Um, when Candy, my fiance, and I first heard of the Equip class, before we even spoke about it, we knew that we were being called to it, so I'm going to be sharing from both of our hearts. During this past year or so, I found myself being um, a bit more reserved, staying inside myself, lacking my joy overflowing, not being so outgoing. I've not been very quick to interject Jesus into situations. This is very different from who I've been in the past. This past year has been really difficult for us as we face things and situations in our lives that I never thought that we'd have to face. In the midst of this time, people who we've known and trusted have told me that, quote, God is not going to work in your life and that I was out of his grace and that my prayers wouldn't even reach the ceiling and I could never even expect to hear anything from God at all. Without understanding our circumstances, there was much judgment and condemnation from what was a close group of friends in our past. In hearing these words from many of them, we found ourselves backing off from being who we know that we are in Jesus. Like I said, I turned inward and was not being very outgoing or bold in the expression of my faith. Candy experienced within herself concern even about how God sees her, sometimes even questioning the level of faith that she knows exists within her. So as we started our class, we read a book about our identities as royalty a sense that I knew so well before that I indeed am a child of the Most High God, yeah. that he loves me, and but more, he likes me, even in the midst of these difficult times, and that for sure he is right by my side, never away from me at all. This sense began to re-alive in me. I began to be reaffirmed in the awareness that being a prince in the family of God was not just words and not just a concept, but it's real. We found freedom from past condemnation, unbelief and unforgiveness in the midst of class sharing and in the midst of the books that we read in teaching time in the equipped class from him. And we found a higher place in the royal family of God. 
as we became more open and vulnerable to receiving personal encouragement, truths, and open to the loving arms of many in this Bethesda family. So because of this new, deeper understanding of Jesus' presence in our lives, who we are to him, who we are in him, and he in us, we're bolder to speak out about his presence in our place. We're quicker to speak and pray into the lives of people we encounter. We're experiencing greater confidence and a greater trust of God's power and grace. I find I'm drawn into intercession for people at a level I've never experienced before. I get these amazing words of hope and encouragement to give them and to speak out who Jesus is and who he wants to be for them in their situation. We're moving further and further away from performance-based mindset, defeating evil things and seeing with a new lens victories Jesus has already won for us. So I want to pray. Thank you, Father, that amidst condemnation, judgment, shame, and guilt, you call us to a higher place to be overcomers, to experience growth encounters, becoming more and more you-focused and less self and world focused regarding our identity. We are discovering in deeper ways the true identity that you place in us before the beginning of time. Courage and boldness is rising up, affecting our mindsets. We ask you, Father God, that first you would smash shame and condemnation in people's lives. Abundantly then, Lord, fill those spaces with our, our, our identities as princes and princesses in your royal family. We proclaim courage and boldness and open our hearts to hear your heart for interceding into the lives of your children. Holy Spirit, demonstrate kingdom in us so that we may best affect the lives of the many around us. My name is Rosa. When I first came here, I was in the search for God. I did have God in my life before, but there was a moment in my life where I got lost and I couldn't find him anymore. I was still praying and called myself a follower of God, but in reality, I was just a slave of traditions and customs, and I was afraid that if I wouldn't comply with them, I would be punished by God and something bad will happen to me. At the same time, I was in the process of getting out of depression and I was trying to hold on to things that will help me to keep my mind busy. I started focusing more on my work, and that helped me. But my personal life was still empty. Even though I was doing better in terms of depression, I was still fearful, afraid to be alone, low self-esteem, and felt like I always needed to be surrounded by people. <coughs> at that moment, I tried to shift my life, and I started looking again for God. I tried to go to different churches, but I couldn't feel him until I was invited to this church. And finally, I felt like home. Right. After I started coming here, I learned what freedom means, what true relationship with God is. We should ask ourselves, do we really feel God in our life right now? Are we doing all these things that a good Christian does because we really feel them, believe on them, or just because it is the right thing to do? If the answer is because we feel them, great. We should keep doing them. But if we do them because it is the right thing to do, we need to stop. Because then we are not truthful anymore with God and ourselves. We are not free anymore. But instead, we are a slave of traditions, culture, or society. I had to ask myself these questions and be truthful with myself and God. Thanks to this realization, now I feel empowered. I feel worth it. I feel that I have a friend that is always with me. And I feel I am a real daughter of God. Yes. Thank you, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, for this new life. Test. Ah, microphone works. My name is Jonathan, um, and uh, 
during this class, before this class, I was really coming under attack with my identity a lot, um, especially a few months before a lot. Um, I wasn't able to hear the Holy Spirit or feel anything during these times of, of help. I was praying and worshiping, trying to press in, but I was pushing the answer. You know, I was forcing the Holy Spirit's hand to, to try to give me the answer or tell me what I needed, you know, which never works if you haven't learned that. Um, uh, I was trying to strive um, to have him speak to me. I wasn't allowing him to speak before I either moved on or something took my attention away. I was frustrated and because nothing else, I was, well, nothing else was flowing in my life. One day in class, Paul referred to Bill Johnson's sermon about the Holy Spirit. Bill was talking about imagining the Holy Spirit as a dove on your shoulder and how throughout all your day you should be at a place of such rest and friendship with the Holy Spirit that the dove should never leave our shoulders at all. We should walk so carefully and graciously to not interrupt the environment. We have such a Holy Spirit that we should be in such a constant state of rest that we're able to hear the Holy Spirit's whisper in our ear and no outward environment could disturb it. Hearing that in class changed my entire way I responded when I felt the Holy Spirit come over me. I was waiting for the Holy Spirit to show up. That taught me to know that he's always with me no matter what. I was at work one day and I was being yelled at and cursed at by a customer because of something else someone did. I was told I was an idiot. I didn't know what I was doing. Suddenly the Holy Spirit came over me and told me that all those things that were being said were lies. Every time the customer made an accusation or negative statement about myself, the Holy Spirit told me, that's not true. That's not you. <clears throat> Sorry. And he told me the truth about myself, that I was good at my job, that I do know what I'm doing, and that I'm an asset to this team. Yes. <clears throat> As all of this was happening, I was simply resting in what God was saying, giving him the room to speak to me before I responded to the customer and keeping the dove on my shoulder. Now I feel the presence of God so strongly in my day-to-day -day that I'm more attentive and cultivating an environment where I stay constant rest with Him. Because of this, I see more, I'm more able to counter negative statements made against the places I like work and even my day-to-day -day, and to be able to know my identity and what God is saying about me. I'm able to hear God speak about me and their identity and I'm taking risks to speak out of those against the people who are speaking against me or others. Right now, I want to impart to you, the Holy Spirit, to inv just invite him in to where you are. I want to cultivate and honor a relationship every day. So live in a constant state of rest and a constant state of hearing your voice speak to them. I want everyone's ears to open, to be able to hear the Holy Spirit when you identify you're under attack. To be able to identify the lies being spoken and to hear the confirmation of his truth in the midst of those lies. I release the impartation of rest to everyone here. The ability to wait on the Lord before taking action and stay in the calm of his presence against anything raging against you in your everyday environments. Amen. Amen. How many of you received something of value this morning, right? See, this is, this is the goodness of God towards us because we said yes to be his family. Now, it's one thing to be equipped with wealth. It's another thing to know how to invest it. So might I just add a little equipping piece right here on the end as we close so that everything that we just received, we can eat, not just put on a shelf somewhere. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and actually, as I invite my class sometimes, I'll say, hey, you want to write this down? So, hey, you might want to write this down. Uh, just four little things. And uh, I need to get them so I don't forget what those four little things were. Actually, it's five little things. Okay, first of all, what you just stood and received... You have what you asked for. Okay? Jesus, uh, let me just give you Bible on that. You could read John 14, 15, and 16, Hebrews 3 and 4, probably the rest of the New Testament, and it'll all tell you that when Jesus gives you something, you have it. He's not an Indian. He doesn't give you something and then take it back. He gives you something, and then it's up to you to learn what you've just received, to possess it, need it. Yes? 
So everybody say, I have what I just asked for. Now, here comes the equipping part. Your life is now going to be mentored by the Holy Spirit to teach you what just got deposited. Everything about the next few weeks of your life is pointed at what you received today. And God is, and the Holy Spirit's now going to come and build shelving in your spirit to agree receive and eat from what you were given today. Do we agree? Yep. Now, here's the part that gets sticky. How he's going to help you learn to eat it is to oppose it. And the point of the opposition, forget the enemy. The enemy's not opposing you. It's God making you get in the gym and build the spiritual muscle to carry the upgrade. You receive something massive, life-changing and miraculous today. Now the Holy Spirit's going to build the muscle in you so you can stand up within it and own it for your very own. See, that's the translation process. It's great to hear these testimonies. It's great for you to stand and agree, but they don't become yours till you have the shelving to put them. Yes? Yes. So when the opposition comes in the next few weeks, don't go to war. Go to Thanksgiving. We, unbeknownst to ourselves, have resisted God and called it the enemy. When in fact it was God all along trying to get you in the gym to build that muscle so you could own your possession. Let's give thanks. Thank you, Papa, what you're doing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am becoming stronger because you're working with me now. To take possession of this wealth I just received. Yes. Do you guys see it? Yes. See, that's a whole mind shift. Because now we can stop arguing with an elusive, Im uh, imaginary devil. And actually start dealing with the real living God that's right inside us. Yes? yes? <laughs> so we give thanks. Because the opposition's building muscle. Now watch this. Stay in the conversation. Don't change the subject. And keep saying yes. Stay in the conversation. Don't change the subject. And keep saying yes. See, your life is destined for increase. How many would say yes to that? then all this that's going to go on between today and your actual eating the meal is unto your increase. Amen? Yes. Stay in the conversation. Don't change the subject. And keep saying yes. 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 And finally, you will possess your encounter when you rest mooring. You will possess your encounter when you rest from warring. What was that last word? Warring. W-A-R-R-I-N-G. God has not called you to war against your own growth. He's called you to agree for it. He's called you to agree with his opinion of what's going on in your life. That's why we need to say yes. It's for our growth. It's for our increase. Stay in the conversation. Don't change the subject. And what's the word? Okay, well, I think 20 of you, let's try that again. What's the right word? Yes.
Yes. Yes, God, keep going. Build what the Holy Spirit wants to build. I want to possess my inheritance. Yes? Yes. Okay. Ben, I'm going to turn it over to you. I think we hit the mark this morning. Thank you for letting us be a part of your morning. Man, can we just give them a hand one more time, you guys? My goodness. So there's 68, I think, people, um, actually, sons and daughters, that are being upgraded even more um, every Tuesday night, three, we three weeks, actually three Tuesdays a month. And it's well worth the investment of your time to get there. You know, I was talking to several different people, and I know that that, that class, I believe it's actually going to um, more than triple the next time it's ready to sign up. Um, there's an acceleration happening in the spirit. We've all heard that. There's a, we're in a season of acceleration. Um, and you can see it happening all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord gave me a word. and He said, Ben, you're in a season of transitional favor. And transitional favor, there's two sides of that coin. You have that you're always walking and moving in the favor of the Lord, the unmerited favor. At the same time, there's that stretching that happens. And when the stretching happens, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit gets the junk that he doesn't need you with. It starts to come to the surface. And it comes to the surface because he needs the gold without the dross and he gets scraped off. Because you guys are so full of gold. So don't get frustrated. Don't get down on yourself. Don't have shame. Don't have condemnation. If you're feeling like you're stretched and stuff is coming to the surface, or if you see that happening in others, don't get frustrated. Get encouraged because the stuff's getting ready to get scraped off. Yeah. The Holy Spirit needs you without that stuff. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Yes. Yes. So why don't we all stand up? Thank you, Lord. Sometimes I just love to just speak in tongues. Can we do that for a minute? Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Can we just speak in heavenly language while the ministry team comes up here real quick? Something happens when you speak in tongues. Come on, saints of God. Just start to praise the Lord. Robo shaka barara, ministry team, come on up. Shururu boro shararara. Robo shururu bakararara. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for sonship. Sonship, spirit of adoption is happening right now. The Father loves you guys. The Father loves us. I just get excited about his presence and I just got to move around. 